There we go. Okay. So, um, why don't we, Angela, why don't you keep talking a little bit? Tell us what you've been thinking about AI recently and what you might want to do with us tonight. <laughs> um, I am concerned about my first year writing students using it. Um, and I want to make sure that I show them how to use it productively so that they don't feel like they're having their AI write their essays and get away with it. Cool. Have you played with it at all or yourself? Uh, just the one other evening that I was here. Okay. And Emily, what have you been thinking about it? We've never heard from you on this yet. So, yeah. No, I mean, this is my first time joining you in this venture. Um, I'm just kind of curious as to how you're using AI. And then if you are using AI to respond to students' work, um, I look forward to seeing learning a little bit more about that because that's the bane of every English teacher, right? <laughs> so we would use it to respond to their work. Oh, that's yeah. 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 Okay. I think I misunderstood. That, no, that. no, that, that could be, that, that's per absolutely possible. Well, for example, I guess what comes to my mind when you say that is that there are oftentimes, I guess I, I repeat the same thing, you mm -hmm. know, to kids a lot, like you really need to support your uh, claim with, stronger pieces of evidence mm -hmm. cool cool so um last week and i think what chris and i did last week and i, I wrote i wrote this really long thing it, it was it's sort of like if i had more time it wouldn't have been so long right <laughs> um, as part of the introduction here um to this tonight so i don't blame you if you haven't read it yet so it's okay if i repeat what's in that yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. So last week, Chris and I, Chris came and said, I'd love for kids to be able to get counter arguments, like put, put up a blog post or start putting up a blog post and ask AI for the counter arguments for this post. And what we struggled with was um, we ended up asking it for, it gave us counter arguments. And then we asked it for, um, while well, I'm telling the story, think about what you would like to uh, to maybe create together. Um, so lo long story short, we, we tried lots of different iterations of a prompt to see what it would give back. And we te kept testing it. And it started giving us back quotes from articles and citing them. And we asked it to give the MLA citation um, for it, for those sources. And then we started looking those sources up and they were all fake. <laughs> that's awesome yeah right. or i think paul it's possible that they may have once been there but they weren't there anymore i, I don't even sure. think so i don't even yeah. think so but because none of them exist i checked a lot of them yeah um, and so and and there's no reason for them to be real and right i mean there's it, logically all it's doing is putting words together it's not finding a source for you but i mean if it's been scraping the web it seems to me like it's theoretically possible that it would cite but, the stuff it's been scraping but when you say right but scraping the web means it, it let's say it, it grabs a web page and just takes all the words and it, it takes them all apart right and and puts them in a database can it so, use Sorry, go ahead. So then, it, no, no, and then, then it just logically puts them back together, but it's it's not going back to that original source and finding, you know, anything. Can it use copy uh, written material? The, the, <laughs> ask their lawyers, right? <laughs> yeah, um, they're they're very dodgy about if that's the right word about the um, books they put in here because people think they use Creative Commons books, okay. which are technically copyrighted, right? And you're not uh, really allowed to use them this way, even though. All right, so yeah. So I, I everyone guesses that they have used copyrighted work, um, but they probably shouldn't have. Okay. <laughs> I was just wondering the the references. I mean, yeah. So again, the, and the reason I'm I'm sort of trying to be get all of us and myself too, 
clear about this is so that we know what to ask it to do, right? Mm -hmm. So Chris and I learned you can't ask it for a source because it's only it's only it only does fiction work, right? It only creates sources that it imagines that that look good, right? So I, another article I'm reading distinguishes, and you'll recognize this, it's not so hard, but um, distinguishes between, it was, this article was summarized in Atlantic, um, I think very recently, distinguishes between functional or formal use of language and functional. And like the part of your brain that uses language um, is one part and the part that does reasoning is another part and they're distinct. And they think that um, AI does the formal stuff really well. It doesn't do the, the functional stuff at all, right? So when you ask it to do functional stuff and it looks like it's doing it, it's just faking you out, right? Sounds like my experience being a graduate student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. I, yeah. Go I ahead. feel like it would probably have been an aid with your lit review. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Too late. So here, here's the other thing, though. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm going too much in a different direction, but people generally understand if you give it a text, it will give you the categories of that text, or it'll give you a good summary. Um, it also does the opposite, right? If you give it categories, it'll fill words in for those categories, right? And that's largely what, what I think we're doing when we create prompts for it. So if you give it good categories and thoughtful categories, you can get good stuff back from it, but you're really giving it the, the functions that it's coming back with, right? All right, sorry, to, just to go back to Chris and mine's story a little bit, I, we gave up, <laughs> said, you know what? At sort of at the end, and, and but then I thought about it, and, and I don't know if you saw it, Chris. Then I created one that just asked them to just ask AI to give me three counter arguments for this text, give me not a specific one, but give me what scholars usually say when they back up those counter arguments, and then tell me where to find reliable sources. And it does a pretty good job of that. Right. Mm -hmm. It says go to the New York Times, go find, you know, it, it. So, so again, long story here to kind of say what I think we're learning, what, what we can ask it for and what we can't ask it for. Um, hi, Christina. Hello. All right. So having, we just, we just summarized uh, what Chris and I did last week. And if you read what I wrote, this week about that, you'll catch up on that. Um, Angela, do you have any thoughts of, about where this discussion so far? I'm um, keep going. Okay, fair enough. Christina, do you want to jump in and say what you've been thinking about AI recently? And that's how we started. That's what we. Oh, okay. Um, I don't have any new thoughts recently, I guess. Um, I guess I've been wondering just from like, uh, on Friday, I have a conversation. So in New Jersey, they have media literacy standards K-12 now. Hmm. And Everybody's mentioning that. I guess it's a, there's money attached to it. <laughs> in a good well, way. There's money in and there's, yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's policy and policy. Yeah. So, um, Anyway, so I'm having this conversation with uh, Kristen, who's up in Drew, at Drew University, right? And the person from Namely, because Kristen was saying that, like, you know, they might have these media literacy standards, but they're not updated really to address media. Like, they're not updated to even like get close to AI. Like, they need they need serious. Yeah work to begin with and we're already in this you know other world <laughs> compared to sort of standard media literacy so anyway i've just been thinking about it a little bit related to that i had an opportunity to talk to a young teacher um 
her her prep period's at 7 30 in the morning right so you can get a sense of who she is and they've just started a school in georgia um for it's an ai dedicated school all classes are in their high school are ai focused hmm. and they started in august and like oh that was good timing <laughs> But anyway. What does it mean to be AI focused? Well, she's the, cool. she's the, what? What does it look like to be AI I, focused? I don't know. She, she's the English um, department head. And she, um, so she teaches a class like you do, Chris, about media and, you know, and um, I, she, she just talks about using the, the playground a lot in her class. Yeah. Um, lots of different ways. Uh, so I showed her some of the template work and, and she got interested. Yeah, in I bet. Yeah. yeah. Because nobody's sort of figuring out how to, to capture these prompts and and share them with each other. And so that's what I think is uh, going to be good work to do. So we could it's try... in the templates, right? Yeah. Or so I slow down. Or, I, I or the, prompts, the prompts are within the templates. Do you want to explain that, Chris? Because maybe I it's so familiar to me. Or um, should I show it? You explain while I set it up. Yeah. We're talking about the what what's a template? What's a prompt? Okay. Well, I mean, I would think of the template as natural language instructions for AI to um to follow, you know, perform, perform some kind of rhetorical task, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what we were talking about with uh, counter arguments, kind of thing. And then Please. that those those instructions have prompts within them, I suppose, right? No, the the instructions are the prompts. The real, it's just different language for the same thing. Okay. Um, is that? Clear enough. Yeah, and I think showing it, Paul, is pretty um, okay. Pretty instructive, I think. So, do you see me going to the dashboard? Yeah. Okay. Um, everyone knows how to enlarge the screen if you need to. Why don't you tell us? Uh, I don't. I, I was trying to. There's the four this. arrows at the. Yeah, there you you mean entering full screen? That's all. Yeah, yeah. Next to show pointer, right? I'm just opening the dashboard and it's opening slowly, but it'll get there. So if you go on the, the um, playground and you go to uh, open AI playground, right? Beta, everyone, if you don't know how to get there, screen them, we'll figure it out. But um, once you're there, you can put text in. If you go to the examples, there are a bunch of prompts that already work in the playground, right? Like uh, TL, too long, DR. didn't read. DR is already, you can just put a piece of text in the playground and put those four letters at the bottom and it'll give you a summary. It knows how to do that already. It understands that prompt, right? All right, now I'm going to- AI. I'm sorry, I got distracted. So the prompt is TLDR? That's, That's right. That's the prompt. And who taught it that? Was it, is uh, it I don't, in the world uh, that taught that? A, AI, uh, OpenAI did. I don't know who, right? Okay. Yeah, open AI. yeah. So that's built into the product right now. And there, there are dozens and dozens of others, but then you can create your own. And on the playground, they save the ones you create for 30 days. So there is a little bit of saving you can do, right? Is that clear enough? I think so. Okay. Jack's here too for a second. And yeah. I, by the way, I tell Jack I'm beginning to understand what he means about English language and everything. So because, because, because like it's trained on how the English language works. All of the math is English math, right? And so if you if the language is different than English, it's doing the English math with that different language. Mm. So anyway, mm. I'm beginning to understand what that means. <laughs> All right. Angela, so yell if you uh, need help with anything. <laughs> okay, let's look at the one Chris and I ended up with, right? 
Okay, so right now we are looking at some templates. This oh, is what we were talking about. Yeah. Okay. In the back end of WordPress. This is in in the back end of on the dashboard of WordPress. Mm -hmm. And down here I clicked AI Mojo, which is uh, the the plugin. And um, we named it Research 05 because eventually we did, Chris. <laughs> and then we called it counter arguments. So the first thing we did is we went into the playground and we just said, give us a counter argument for this text. And we tested that out to see what it did. Now we said, oh, wouldn't it be interesting to give it, ask it for three counter arguments? So this is an example of how we're adjusting what it does naturally. We say, give me three possible counter arguments for this text. And then, I'm sorry, I don't, don't want to repeat all this. I did begin, but we went through a whole process and then we, we're ending up with this more simple, honest thing we get back from people. And that's a particular word, but um, we ask it to list the kinds of evidence scholars use to support each of the counter arguments you give. Tell us how I might research for and find reliable sources to find out more about each of these counter arguments. And just to kind of contextualize where I was coming from when mm -hmm. we were doing this was with my students, um, you know, they don't often think that they, well, they think they're right about everything. Well, <laughs> I do too. I mean, don't we all, but you know, um, but, and they don't often, um, they don't, they aren't even aware of counter arguments. And so the idea here was to maybe, um, instead of having them read for our counter arguments, maybe if they were alerted to counter arguments and then go reading, it might, might help them. Right. Right. Sort of direct them more clearly. Mm -hmm. Well, but it also might help the writer, right? Well, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah. give them like yeah. instead of me as a teacher just saying uh, now read for counter arguments and maybe doing demo lessons on what counter arguments are. Mm -hmm. If they, you know, wrestle with the text that they're doing and say what might be some counter arguments for this thing, it seems that's better than me doing a generalized example for everybody. Right. So tell me how if we're going too far in the weeds, but um, <laughs> with the template, but you see the word text there yeah i was just curious about that that's a that's um what do they call it it's a wordpress um embedding thing so and i don't totally understand why this works but when you you come down here and you can create as many fields as you'd like those are the fields that end up under the template and um the user can fill in so if i i've only so for one example is that I have a, a field for responding to the writer can put their text in and then they can write a letter to the reader and ask the reader to use particular criteria, whatever they want, you know, pay attention to my first paragraph. I think it's a mess, whatever you want. And then it'll pay attention to that. So those are the different fields you can put in. Mm -hmm. I'll show you that. Oh, later. That's the interactive part. Yeah. And then there are all these things, which again, on the, on the uh, playground, you can learn about, but you but can let me just say, Paul, to yeah. use these, I don't really need to right now. I don't need to know all this because some templates already exist. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But just to know you can make these available or not yeah. to the student to see, and then you can set all these over here. I, end up sort of always using the same thing, which is the max in length. You can use different engines and you can learn about that too. But again, I just looked around. And different and, engines or different AI engines. Yeah, within GPT-3, right? And I don't understand stop sequences. Somebody can help me. <laughs> temperature is like how wild it gets or how boring it gets, like high temperature, it's uh, so that's worth it. That like gives you more varied text, and low temperature gives you right. Does like more more obvious text. inappropriate? Like, is there an inappropriate or like a, a chat GP? They, well, GPT three claims it. Appropriate for school. Never, never inappropriate for work. Kind of 
it claims it's never going to do that. But uh, okay. But people have found ways around it, right? I, I don't know if you've seen that, but you just tell it to not pay attention to its own rules, and it does it. <laughs> 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 um those those are fun and they've been coming up recently <laughs> the uh so i don't know what to do the uh, where was it good? oh so let me go back to templates for a second so that's the inside of a template but we've now created you know, 60 of them 55 of them something like Damn. that um and <laughs> but but the, but some of them are they doing that right paul what you must be saying all day during this. No, I don't. No, no, <laughs> no. But 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 on the time issue, I think it's important, and you have heard me say this already. But I think it's important to understand that a teacher may not have the time to do right. this, and we need to be sharing them with each sharing other. Sharing them, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. That's what, so. Um, unless anybody wants to interrupt and say, "No, I really want to do this," let me let me show you the most recent thing we messed with. with it. I'm waiting. Okay. What is the most recent thing before you show it? That's <laughs> right. <laughs> so I've taken I've taken Deb Deborah Appleman's ten. She's she. I, I contacted her after this, and she's excited about it. But um, her her critical lenses for literature, mm -hmm. um, and uh, she's building one for um, critical race. See, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. That's kind right. of my fault, but we can talk about that at another time. <laughs> okay. So, well, but I, but that's where my thinking, I want to create a lens like this for that and see what she comes out. All right. So, but, so there are 10 of them. There's reader response and then I have to get to the next, right? And I'll show you these. They're all 10 of them are here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so you can use any of them. So let's just look at the gender feminist one, right? And then, Paul, you're going to show uh, these in, at work too, right? Not I just am. making the template. Yeah, so tell me. Yeah. So I think I've overdone it. And so that's with the language here. But uh, so that's something you can only test out and see, oh, if I take that paragraph out, does it still do what I need it to do? So that's the kind of work you do. Um, but so should I read this or can, you can read it, right? So I just tell it be a reader uh, using the gender feminist critical lens from Deborah Appleman's book. Put the book there, and then I say, Here's the I, and this is actually just from her, her, the back of uh, an appendix in her book. So there's an essential question, the, the central concerns, and the critical assumptions. I think these are really. I said I was saying earlier, we know AI can take text and give it categories, but you it can also do the opposite. You can give it categories and it'll fill in the text, right? And I think that's what we're doing. Does that make sense? So you're can I can I ask yeah. a question? question? Please, okay. Yeah, because so I'm talking too much. <laughs> your critical assumptions are the categories, correct? That you're giving it? That's right. <laughs> Okay, so if you were to make an argument based on that, I mean, would it then maybe make a paragraph that uh, talks about how any text cannot exist outside of a gender frame of reference and then so on and so forth? Yeah, do, should we test it? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, I haven't tested on this one, shall we, Chris? Sure. <laughs> Same one again. But I. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay, so this is the one that we messed around with for the. Is this a, a student work? A student writing, yeah. 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 We're just gonna show Jack the voices. Let me. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to the one that we've used before, just because. Uh, just for the hell of it. So it'll take me a minute to find it. So thoughts, okay. ideas, questions. <laughs> um, what are you looking for right now, Paul? I'm just looking for the one I've tested before. It's it's a little more. Um, I don't know what it is. Doesn't matter. I mean, they're they're both interesting. I just again, I've tested Deborah's stuff on 
on a post that I'm looking for right now. It's still on the front page, I think. Uh, well, is this student reference? Well, my there it I is. posted that. So not all students. <laughs> See? I recommend that. But these are AI written students. Yeah, and this AI one is AI. also like all right. That's the AI image. I don't know if this one I yeah, this is no. okay. Ready? So here's what I'm going to edit for this. Um, so any teacher on the site could do what's this. it titled? Um, American okay. Dream versus American Dream versus Indians versus my experience. Right. Okay. Okay. And so this is the edit screen in WordPress. Um, top right corner, I'm opening AI Mojo. That brings me to the playground, right? Um, I go and and <laughs> it, 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 you'll recognize this from other places in teaching. Like when you want to give kids a template is a good question, and when you want them to make it up themselves depends on your situation and what you're trying to accomplish, right? So I wouldn't you always use a template. Sometimes they could just use the playground here and make up their own prompts. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Um, the way AI Mojo works is you, if you click the bottom um, block where there's text, and then you, oh, I need to pick the template first. I'm going to pick the template, and I'm looking for the feminist template. And there it is. There's the critical lines. Again, students can do this. And then I'm going to, I've opened that block, and then I'm going to go here. I'm going to pop. So that whole blog post is here in the text box. This text box is that field we were creating with those brackets earlier. Does that make sense? So you can control how many of these fields and what you call these fields with the template. I'm hitting generate. Thoughts, questions as this is playing? <laughs> no, this is good. You're right. saying that the template, if you don't put that text field, then that text field won't show up there? That's right. OK. All right, Chris. And no. you, but you could also call it something else. You could call it you know, letter to my mother, whatever. You know. Yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah. What were you going to ask, Chris? Uh, I was going to make an observation that, um, <laughs> you know, like a literature study, you could look at uh, a poem. You could pop that in there and look at it through the different uh, lenses. Yeah, I that's People. right. Yeah, that's right. And and it wouldn't have to be text from the left side. It, you could just put it in the box there, and and then use the template. Right. I mean, I feel like as a student, I would understand, or as anybody, I'd understand a poem better if I looked at it through different lenses. Right. So the example I I use the same example that um, Apple Apple yeah Apple that De Deborah does. Um, which which is um, Sylvia Plath's mushrooms. <laughs> so I tested all ten of these using that one. But um, and that's all up on Youth Voices. I can show you that later. But let's look at the results. Yeah. So using it, it feeds back to us using the gender feminist critical lens. Three possible responses that was in the prompt, by the way, or the instructions. All the same word, different words for the same thing. Three possible responses to this text could be, the text reinforces gender stereotypes by reinforcing the idea that Native Americans are different from other people and that it is men's responsibility to take care of their families financially. This could be bullshit, right? <laughs> it's, maybe it's making sense. Um, it also portrays Native American women as particularly vulnerable to violence and rape, suggesting it does do that. Sorry, sorry. I'll stop. I'll just read. Suggesting that they are powerless to protect themselves. Um, this too, this text critiques gender roles by highlighting the experience of Native American women and the difficulties they face due to the lack of economic opportunities and the prevalence of violence against them. It also demonstrates how gender roles can be oppressive as Native American women are portrayed as powerless and unable to protect themselves, sort of repeating itself here, right? But the text challenges definitions of masculinity by highlighting the struggles 
of Native American men who are unable to provide financially for their families due to the lack of employment opportunities. The text also portrays Native American men as vulnerable to violence and oppression, suggesting that they too can be victims of gender-based discrimination. Um, thoughts? <laughs> I mean, it got some other things, right? Yeah, I mean, we didn't spend time to read the text, so we're not sure. Yeah. I'm curious to see the template again, if you don't mind. It, that That's a geeky interest, so I don't, we don't necessarily have to go there. Oh, okay. there it is. Right. Yeah. Could you up the temperature? I'm curious to see what happens, especially <laughs> <laughs> with assumptions as, you know, academic as these. Yeah, so... Okay, so there, so let's start with those. That's good. And then I have another. Um, Christina, anything else you want to see here? You can look at it too, by the way. But um, Yeah, that's true. Um, no, I just okay. was trying to like go back to the so, question, the so, concerns, the consumptions. And then what it did, though, was what you told it to do underneath all of that. Wait, like, yeah. Emily Where said, these say... are the categories, and then you use this. Oh, here's, so here's, here's some of, this is the line. So, this is Appleman's work here, all this what to do. That's yeah. right out of her appendix. But then I just say, use the gender feminist critical lens to describe a possible response. Oh, why? Did... Huh. All right. And then I say, give me three possible responses. Give me as many reasons as you can for each of these responses. If you don't do that, it'll just list like the topic sentence. Mm -hmm. So that's something you learn. It's something you learn, and it's also something that, you know, students, I want them to do their own thing, but it'll take them forever to come up with something that works, right? So I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. I have a question if I can ask. Um, can you cite that text? Can you ask it to cite that text, at least pull in quotes? Or... Yes. Okay. It'll, it'll pull quotes from the text. It'll pull quotes from the text that you give it. Right. Is that what you were asking? Yeah. Is that a separate no. command? Because no. I don't know that I saw it do that. No, but I don't think I did ask it to do that. Did okay. I? No. In other places, we have tried that. Mm -hmm. um, Jack said, um, "Do you know who Valerie Solanas is?" No. She wrote. She 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 shot Andy Warhol. She, she wrote famously. The, the scum, oh, oh yes, the yes. Scum yes, Manifesto, the Society for Cutting Up Men. Yes. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah. He said that's what the temperature. It was a formative right undergraduate there. text in my in my life. It was sort of <laughs> it was the grunge era. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I know it. Well, um, if, you, if, you, if, you turn, if I turn the temperature, the temperature up, how much is it going to sound like Valerie Solanas? <laughs> is there a Valerie Solanas scale? <laughs> so these are games that we need time for kids to play too, right? But yeah. Um, okay. So let me go back to the template. I'm going to, I mean, I, the temperature is pretty high already, just to say, but I'll put it up and it, I'll put it up to one. Okay. The, the other thing, go ahead, what? No, go ahead. I, the other thing I want to mention is that just by doing it again, you're going to get a different result, and you might like it better, <laughs> which is kind of interesting to think about, too. But I think we need to teach kids to not accept the first thing it gives you, even if it's using the template. But to try it three times and see which one is better for your purposes. <laughs> um, did that make sense? Okay. So I'm going to hit this. You're going to ask something, Emily? Um, I, it's not. Say something. Yeah. It wasn't repetition penalty. I forget what the. Um, yeah. But I just wondered. I saw, I think. Um, I saw a number of terms repeated through this. I just wondered if you could cut. Yeah, if I think you could. Yes. And again, the only way to figure it out, I think, is try it. You know, and go back, test it out. Um, should we look at what we got 
Let's see. And I would just make an observation that uh, in the my classroom, I would have the students try to do this first and then run it through AI and, and compare the differences. If they were doing their own text or an, a piece of literature or which? Either one, but I would mm -hmm. say rather than going straight to it, uh, in this instance for me, I think I'd have them try to attempt it mm -hmm. and then do the AI and compare. What, go ahead. I could just really see this working for improving reading comprehension. You know, there's, because, yeah. yeah, there's a good number of, you know, summaries of the text, but also, yeah, looking through with a, a critical lens. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think it's interesting to think about reading multiple versions. Yeah, like, I think starting with your own would probably be the way to, like, trigger what's going on here and then see multiple versions of of the other of this summaries oh, that could be really interesting for like, for comprehension yeah and it works really well with the, the critical lenses yeah and there's there's something about inductive learning right that i, I think that's right but that if you see an example rather than seeing a definition of a feminist lens, you kind of get it without having to see the definition. So uh, just to push back a little bit, Chris, maybe seeing the examples first and then trying it yourself is another possibility. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But um, let's see if it got any wilder here. I don't know. <laughs> the author of the text is reinforcing gender stereotypes of Native Americans women being particularly vulnerable to rape and assault and non-Native Americans. It sort of got like shorter and- It did, yeah. I'm not sure why. Punchier, it uses yeah. strong, some stronger words, slightly stronger words. Uh -huh. Shall we try a different lens just to see how that feels? I want to mention that... one thing with reading okay, comprehension. Okay. Oh, like, yeah. Years ago, I was working on understanding second language acquisition, understanding new languages in an immersive environment. In an immersive environment, you don't have a lot in the way of scaffolding. You know, if you you don't have dictionaries or whatever. So mm -hmm. we were we were we wrote scenes out from like in like four or five different ways, like with direct discourse and indirect discourse from one character's point of view, from an omniscient point of view, so that the learner. If, if, if some of the language, if they didn't comprehend some of the second language, they could they could read it from another point of view. We we would use synonyms in the other point of view. So so basically the idea was if you could you could read things sort of at, at the at the edge of your capabilities and the safety net rather than the safety net of your of your comprehension of your reading comprehension being translation, the safety net would just be like another Repetition. another another way of saying it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's a mm -hmm. lot to mind of. A long, long gone project, but 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 one that was interesting at the time. Cool. So um, let me let me turn to this because like we can show this kind of quickly. I think if you go to I don't think I have it up anywhere, so I'll find it. If you go to youthvoices.live slash oh here it is um, slash uh, AI does lenses. <laughs> um, I put all of the results. I put three of the uh, uh, one. Each of the result has three examples, right? So I put all ten of them. You're seeing this on here. So this is "Mushrooms" by Sylvia Plath. Um, so you can read the poem. And then you can go and quickly look at what the reader response version was. You can look at the the theory card underneath it. That yeah, the Larry theory card. Or you can look at the so let's look at the Marxist perspective. Oh, oh, but the, sorry, this is of the poem, right? Do you see how this works? Paul, oh, where is all this? <laughs> this is at youthvoices.live slash um, AI does lenses. This is this is unbelievable. <laughs> I spent all the grad school doing, you know, getting, 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 making, it, you know, trying to do this. Yeah. So all of these, these are all the resp the AI responses for each of the each of them, and 
you know, Appleman does argue that looking at a text with various lenses helps you see that text better. So I think it would be useful. On the reading tip, I, um, Emily, the, the sort of reverse of that is also true. Like if you're not a good reader, this may not be a good tool for you. Right? You got to do a hell of a lot of reading here. And, and so it's an interesting, I think that's an interesting question too, right? But, oh, okay. So um, let me see. Oh, I was going to, let me give the, so this is uh, Sam Reed's kid. Um, and this is his poem. And did the same thing with 10 lenses, right? And so here's a Marxist point of view of, of this poem. Should I read that? Is that okay? Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This text reveals how social class can be a determining figure in a person's life and identity. The narrator is working as a working class person who has to grapple with the idea of being both an enemy kid. There's a quote from the poem, by the way, and the oldest of four brothers. This is, this is a representation of the struggle faced by many working class people who have to find ways to fit into both the world of the wealthy and the powerful and the world of working class. The narrator's choice is to remain loyal to people despite their social class shows that it's possible to make meaningful connections across class boundaries. I, anyway, I was pretty impressed with that. <laughs> Responsive. The text shows how class conflict is an integral part of our society and narrator's identity is shaped by the place in his working class, in the working class, which he is trying to escape from. He is aware of the power dynamics between the wealthy and the powerful and the working class, and he is trying to find a way to navigate this divide. His choice to remain loyal to his people despite their social class is a Subtle critique of the way the wealthy um, class exploits the working class and suggests the meaningful connections can be made across class boundaries, etc. And then, I mean, and I generally the responses are pretty different from each other, um, but they're all having the same Marxist perspective. And what I propose in the text here in the center, just to say, and then we can hear what you're thinking, um, is that you do this in a group and the group each takes a, a theory and reads that out loud to the group and you get a sense of the whole thing. Um, it's too much, I know, but <laughs> hopefully it's uh, makes it available in some way too. And the cards underneath just give like a <sighs> So, literary perspective. Yeah. So oh, mine says literary theory card. Weird. Yeah. So the bottom ones, the one of bottom ones are um I just I, do I have I been saying Deborah's name correctly? It is Appleman, right? Yeah, it is Appleman. Okay. Yeah, it's Sorry. Okay. <laughs> okay. So this this is again just from her appendix and it's linked here. Um and so the bottom ones have her, they're, they're just basic summaries of the literary theory. Got it. And the top ones are, she does these um, workshops where you get a card and you then act that person, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So these are the cards that she hands out in those workshops. But they're, but they're also, and I decided that it was too complicated to put the prompts, but if you want to, you can. But but these cards are very similar to the prompts, too. Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, and worth knowing, way down at the bottom, it says try it yourself, right? It, so this is instructions for how to go in, use the templates on any text you want to, and mess with it. I mean, yeah. So, thoughts, or do you want to go back to AI, or? Well, I, mean, I yeah, I have a thought. Um, Good. <laughs> so we just um, at my school every spring we do this thing called poetry out loud, where every student has to memorize a poem of their choice and then yeah. you know deliver. 
And so I do a lot of little things like, let's try to learn the poem better. So um, hmm. this seems like be really instructive for kids to get to know their poem better. Right, I, I agree. And yeah. also be introduced like to all the theory. Yeah. Do you have do yeah. you have a poem yeah. that we could try it on? One of the poems that they're reciting? Yeah. Sure. I mean, unless other Well, I mean, I'll get that them. if someone else wants to talk while I'm getting it. I have them right here. Okay. So, I mean, one thing, the text dominance is interesting just to think about for a second, because like both uh -huh. you have to be a reader to read all this content. Um, and... But I mean, at the same time, like the fact that you can enact the content, like you can like l read a theory and maybe partially understand it, and then you can see it like enacted, I feel like yeah. is helpful, right? But um, but also we're analyzing text-based documents, like we're not. That's right. We, this, all, this is all text. Yeah. 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 Although. Can you let's, do let's this though? That. I mean, I know you can do, you can create AI images, but can AI at this point do this kind of thing on an image? If you had a, dis I think it can only do something with the description of the image. Okay. And, and you know, you're supposed to have a alternate description on, on any image that's online, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Whole text it, thing. but I haven't tested that. that. Yeah. But the, the other thing is, and maybe we need to, think about this, um, if, if the result we're getting is too complex for our students, we can, we can tell it, give me a simpler version, right? Or give me a version for that a sixth grader would understand. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it'll do that, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, that's, you haven't you haven't asked for a certain age or there isn't like a notion that these are students or anything like that, right? This is just like without um, qualifying that. So far, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's something. Good. And let let's just um show Chris this. Chris posted his poem. Paul. Oh, okay. Wait. Lucille Clifton's poem. Okay. Yeah. Let me... <laughs> Not yours. I'll get there after, right after I went. I'm gonna. I'm bringing. I'm going into AI Mojo right now. Oh, you're gonna do it. Oh, good, good. Give it a and shot. you can share your screen, or can you share screen? Here's hoping. I think I tried to uh, deal with it. Okay, but let me just show you, uh, Christina. If you go to and, and Emily and Angela too, um, if you go to templates, right, and you start a new template, mm -hmm. you can you can um, open the library. And you can find a, one that already exists, and just oh, let's uh, here. So uh, the Marxist critical mm -hmm. lens, right? Um, and it and it pops everything in here, and you can just add be a reader. Oh, be, yeah. You can just say be a sixth grade. reader right and i'm pretty sure it'll give you more simpler text cool um and you just say that it would be that's why the, the number 60 sounds big but <laughs> you can keep you know, like remixing and rethinking yeah. yeah so yeah all right chris um i'll stop sharing and you'll share maybe sure um just in case i'm gonna pop it might be more efficient to pop it in Should the I chat Okay, I'll do that. So I did um, an archetypal. Hmm. Do you uh, want to explain what that is? <laughs> yeah, so uh, one of the lenses is the archetypal lens, Very which funny. is how does this text show similarities to ancient story designs, character categories, and imagery? So Wait, where that's did... Lucille Clifton's um, Won't You Celebrate With Me? And so the response we got, just reading the first one, it's... Wait, Chris, are you sharing? Or am I supposed oh, to I'm not. Thinking? I'll try to share. Let's see if I can share. 
he put it in chat. He cut and pasted oh, it. Oh, and I couldn't find the chat. <laughs> so. It's under nearby. Thank you. Under people nearby, right? Whole group. group. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. So the poem is an archetypal hero's okay. journey with the speaker facing seemingly insurmountable obstacles, the Babylon of her dual identities, which is really helpful for a student trying to learn this poem, like to put some context behind some of the allusions. Mm -hmm. and eventually finding a way to create a life for herself. The reference to starshine and clay could be interpreted as a duality between the spiritual and the physical, which is often seen in the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. Additionally, the speaker's metaphor of her one hand holding tight, her other hand could be interpreted as having the strength to overcome her obstacles and find a way forward. Sounds legit to me. I mean, it's kind of sounds archetypal. Mm -hmm. So I guess my point is like, I think that would have probably helped that student understand that poem better and probably recite it right. with more authority. And figure so, out what Babylon means. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris, yeah, let me jump on that word. And again, this is in the writing I did about last week, but the, um, the what researchers are talking about or certain group of them are talking about for aligning AI to human values, right? Are three really useful words, I think. And one is helpful. Like, is the result helpful? Is it honest? And then is it, um, sorry, harmless, right? And, and the harmless and the help, and some researchers get rid of the honest because they think it can be collapsed into helpful and harmless. So going back to our example from the counter um, argument, I think giving kids fake um, fake citations is harmful, right? Mm. It misdirects. Um, even though giving them the, the counter arguments is helpful. So, and then obviously making up citations isn't honest. So I think those three words are really interesting to think about when we when we evaluate the results we're getting and 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 they're interesting because you just used it right that's why i jumped on it right mm -hmm. that you thought this would be a helpful thing but then we need to think but is it honest <laughs> right and is it by by honest we mean accurate to the world right and is it is it harmless yeah. I mean, I just started with a realistic task that, um, at least to me, seems like, uh, and I think it's probably what a lot of people do, seems like, you know, how can I help them understand this piece of literature better? And if they're all reading different things, I don't yeah. I don't know that I can take it one by one and do what just happened there. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So helpful in that respect. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah, good. Okay. Um, I was wondering about bias and like cultural bias. Yeah. Uh, so I'm sure that that weighs in at some point. I mean, you're looking at a standardized version of English, so I'm not quite sure how they measure or create that standard. Um, do you know? Mathematically is where to start to understand. Okay. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So, I, so again, as English, you know, people, we understand language. And so we understand that when you have a word, it's not just a word. It's also like all of the pragmatics around that word. It's also where it fits in a sentence is what gives it meaning and all that. And somehow they're able to take the, the what do they call them again? Sorry, the, the units that are almost like words and, and give them lots of vectors through that unit. And so it knows based on where it is in the sentence and what, and the sentences that came before it and after it, it knows what the next meaningful word would be. So really, it's just guessing the next word based on the context of the word, right? So, so you would have bias there, right? Because there's 
there's bias in the context that was put in the machine, I think. But going back to the harm, that's, that is, is it harmless is exactly what it's, that's looking at bias. I mean, obviously something that's illegal, something that's pornographic, something that's dangerous is harmful, but also misdirection I think is harmful or, you know, yeah. or bias is harmful. Yeah. So for getting results like that, the question is, can we create prompts that correct that bias? And I think, and does we, the, I think we can. And when right? you yeah. when you create prompts that correct for that bias, does that add new vectors to the? I don't know. I don't. I don't. Like, think, can we as users shift bias? I guess is. I think OpenAI could decide to do that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we have the power to change their system, right? Yeah. What do you think would happen if we kept feeding it, um, you know, multicultural texts with a lot of dialects? <laughs> it would probably take like thousands upon thousands for it to make some sort of difference. I don't Keep know. going up in that. We're talking, <laughs> they're talking 5 billion. Right? Hey. I'm, ta I'm telling you, these texts are incredibly large. Yeah. No. No, so that's yeah. But then, I mean, there. What Bender is somebody who argues that we don't need these massive things; that we just need better texts in our database, right? So, but I, I'm ready to be convinced that maybe there are those who argue that the bigger and bigger the database gets, the less there'll be bias. I'm not sure that's true, but. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. um, I also just did the Lit and Poetry number three, Critical Lens Biographical. You're having fun? Good. <laughs> so I, you know, there's a limitation there because it's, it, it doesn't know, you know, we would ask our students to do research on that, that real person. Here it's trying to construct who that real person might be based on the poem. So, you know, yeah, I think the right. first one was more helpful, the archetypal one, than the biographical one. I think it's asking it to do a lot there. So it's it's good for people to think about too. Yeah. Although with the Sylvia Plath poem, they did somehow know Sylvia Plath. Mm, okay. I don't, how, I don't know how they did. Oh, they they just knew. I I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't it know. Might That's be a good more question. on Sylvia Plath, maybe. I I and, think. And if you just copy the title and the author, then they then it knows, right? Versus just the. Oh yeah. Does that work? Let's try it. I don't know. That's a good question. And and with the students' poem, it it sort of um, the bio. It it just it takes. The details from the poem and and makes a biography out of that. You know, it says that he's a man. You know, he's the, he says in the poem that he's the oldest of four siblings. Mm -hmm. So they, so it, yeah. But but Chris, the critical moment there with students, I think, is to, or it's not just one moment, but the sort of practice is to be thinking about when is it a good time to go look something up, mm -hmm. and when is a good time to do AI, right? And I don't, you know, they may they may be different. Yeah, that <laughs> for now maybe, it could change. I don't maybe know. didn't work well for that, but it could work well in another situation. Right. And again, having them try that first in this case, and then looking at that may be helpful. Okay. Did you just, did you get something or? I'm just there? generating the. Um, hmm. Angela, are you still there? Do you want to throw in here or? It's fine if you don't, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, I am still here. I'm listening. Um, I had a question about the temperature. What did that mean? So um, you should go onto the OpenAI playground and ask, and, and there, there's, there are texts wow. that will tell you better than I'm going to. But they say that, like, you know, when we were given examples of repeating 
um, like repeating the same prompt. Mm -hmm. um, if, if the temperature is low, it'll give you the same thing almost every time. If it's high, it'll give you different things. So it okay. gives you more dynamic, varied languages. That Back to the vectors notion that it opens up more vectors of possibility for that word, I think is okay. the understanding. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, okay. So Paul, just a last little one. I just put in the, like Christina mentioned, I put in the title of the poem and the poet's mm -hmm. name. And that actually, I verified she, it really um, is true. It's accurate. Like she was a single mother with raising six children. And there's nothing in the poem that says There's that. nothing in the. No, I just put name of, ty you know, poem and author. And so oh, that yeah. seems to check out. It says, the poem only says she's non-white and a woman. Mm-hmm. So it, that, that looks like it's going and finding information, but I think it is just finding her name in the database and realizing that her last name is connected to that name, right, at times, and then realizing, oh, that's connected to this information or these words that are in that information and just stringing it all together. But then, you know, the act of verifying that seems worthwhile too. Yeah. But that's not looking up, like, who is Lucille Clifton. No. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's fiction that worked. <laughs> Whoa. That's a crazy statement. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, circling around the media literacy, like checking out what you, the results you get through AI is now me, a new kind of media literacy that we need. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's using some of the same techniques. Right, right. I mean, I'm still verifying information to see if it's accurate. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. So... We that should we should end. Thank you for <laughs> playing with us here tonight. <laughs> Emily, where are you yeah. based? Oh, good question. <laughs> That's always a good question. She, she just <laughs> submitted her dissertation. Oh, she, oh you, wow! You that at the beginning. Yes. Wow. It's and you're still sitting in front of a computer. Uh, yeah. Well, now I have to get stuff ready for publication and job apps and that. I'm teaching at a, a private Catholic girls' school this semester. Nice. Where? You know, yeah, St. Francis, the one that's in Lady Bird. <laughs> Are you in Texas or? No, Sacramento. Oh, Sacramento. Sacramento. Okay. Yeah. It's interesting. I'm trying not to get myself fired, but if <laughs> my students talk about <laughs> Marxism, I'm not going to stop them. <laughs> they read with various lenses what can i do i, I think uh <laughs> jesus was a marxist so, so. <laughs> there you go <laughs> chris works at a catholic school that's too, right a catholic school talk. teacher said that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be true <laughs> all right <laughs> good, night, good night thank okay. you bye bye See ya. <laughs>